Welcome to the first webinar in this two-part series on the ICCA registry. This is a global registry that exists to document and support conservation areas that are governed by indigenous peoples and local communities. Thank you for joining. My name is Heather Bingham and I'm going to discuss the reasons for participating in the ICCA registry. If you have any questions at any stage, please type these into the questions box and they'll be addressed at the end of the webinar. We'll be showing this webinar again over the coming months, so any feedback that might help us to improve the content would be much appreciated. Both today's webinar and tomorrow's will be made available online, and much of the information is also available in a manual that was produced recently to accompany the International Registry. You will be given a link to this manual at the end of the webinar. We want this information to be used as much as possible, so please share widely with your networks. This is webinar one in a two-part series. This webinar will cover the background of the database, who can participate, the potential benefits of participating, things to consider before deciding to participate, how the information is used, some case studies, and safeguards that are in place. Webinar two will cover different ways to provide data, providing information in different languages, the specific information that's required to participate, the peer review process that data needs to go through, and what to expect after providing data. You should have received an invitation to webinar two, and this will be held tomorrow. Firstly, I'll provide a bit of background on the ICCA registry. This section will provide information on what the ICCA registry is, what Protected Planet is, including the World Database on Protected Areas, or WDPA, the relationship between the ICCA registry and the World da Database on Protected Areas, and who UNEP WCMC, the managers of the ICCA registry and World Database on Protected Areas, are. ICCA is an abbreviation of Indigenous Peoples and Community Conserved Territories and Areas. The ICCA registry is a database of these territories and areas. It was started in 2009 and has been evolving through a highly participatory process. It is a voluntary peer-reviewed avenue for both Indigenous Peoples and communities and the international conservation community to recognize and protect the multiple values of ICCAs and to highlight their contributions to conservation around the world. The ICCA registry is part of the ICCA Global Support Initiative, which involves partners from the ICCA Consortium, the Jeff Small Grants Program at the UN Development Program, IECN, UNEP WCMC, and is funded by the German government. The ICCA registry is managed by UNEP WCMC. This organization provides a suitable place for the development of the registry, given its history of support to decisions on science and policy at the international level, and its history of excellence in knowledge management for intergovernmental processes. The ICCA Registry Database is a secure offline database. Although the database is offline, the registry has an online presence through its website, iccaregistry.org, shown here. The website includes details on background information, things to consider before registering, and how to register. An optional step in the registration process is providing a case study on an ICCA, which is then displayed on this website.
Case studies on individual ICCAs can be viewed on the website through the Explore pages. These case studies include the story of the ICCA, photos, supporting documents, and other information. ICCAs with case studies are also shown as point locations on a global map. To reiterate, providing a case study is optional and registered ICCAs do not need to have an online presence if they don't want one. UNEPWCMC also manages Protected Planet, which is the home of the World Database on Protected Areas. Protected Planet is linked to the ICCA registry, but the two are separate. The World Database on Protected Areas is the most comprehensive global database on protected areas, containing more than 230,000 sites. This includes sites under all governance types, such as government agencies, private entities, including individual landowners and organizations, shared governance, and indigenous peoples and local communities. This final governance type means that there is an overlap between the World Database on Protected Areas and the ICCA registry. The two databases are linked and share a similar structure. Information on ICCAs can be stored in one or both databases, depending on the wishes of the ICCA's custodians. One key difference is the scale at which the information is most useful. The World Database on Protected Areas is most useful for understanding protected areas of all broad governance types at the global level. It contains only basic descriptive information on each site. The ICCA registry only contains information on sites under the governance of indigenous peoples and local communities. And it contains much more in-depth information, making it most useful for understanding individual sites or networks of sites in a region or state. The ICCA registry is also useful for safeguarding in-depth knowledge on ICCAs and for highlighting specific case studies. This is the Protected Planet website. Through this website, the World Database on Protected Areas can be explored and the data can be downloaded. The website address is protectedplanet.net. The website can also be used to look at information for specific countries. The example shown here is Namibia, where around half of the protected area coverage is made up of protected areas governed by local communities. The country pages provide information on the number of protected areas under each governance type. Individual protected areas also have their own pages with site-specific information. The example shown here is Huab Communal Conservancy in Namibia. Both the World Database on Protected Areas and the ICCA Registry are managed by UNEPWCMC in collaboration with its partners. To provide more detail on WCMC, the World Conservation Monitoring Centre is a UK-based charity operating as the Specialist Biodiversity Assessment Centre of UN Environment. Our strategic objectives are to provide the data and information that support decision making and to strengthen capacity for biodiversity decision making. Our role at the boundary of science and policy means that we are well placed to promote understanding of the many values of ICCAs 
and to ensure that they are appropriately taken into account by decision makers. The next section will cover who can participate. The ICCA registry is designed for participation by the custodians of ICCAs, local communities and indigenous peoples. It is these custodians who should decide whether to participate in consultation with their wider communities. Community representatives who wish to provide data should secure the free, prior and informed consent of their wider communities first. These ICCA custodians can provide data themselves or they can do so with the support of local non-governmental organizations or other experts. NGOs and other experts can provide data only if they have the free, prior and informed consent of the ICCA's custodians. This next section will discuss the benefits of the ICCA registry and the World Database on Protected Areas. It includes potential benefits for communities, potential benefits for the wider world, and it's important to bear in mind that some of the benefits described are only relevant if the community decides to make their information available to the public. This is something that communities should consider when they are deciding whether or not to place sharing restrictions on their data. There are a number of potential benefits that communities may experience as a result of providing data. Some of these relate to the dynamics and cohesion within the community itself. For example, Discussing and documenting an ICCA may help communities to appreciate the multiple values of their ICCAs. It may enhance appreciation of the ICCA by different groups within the community, including groups who may previously have been less engaged. In this way, it may strengthen solidarity within the community as a whole, foster intergenerational communication and youth engagement. It may also encourage greater participation in the ICCA and strengthen community dedication to maintaining it along with associated cultural values. The quality and, and vitality of governance of the ICCA may be improved by more diverse participation from within the community. Further potential benefits relate to recognition. In some cases, increased external recognition could help communities to secure funding and support. It could contribute to security by providing increased visibility to the ICCA or by contributing to recognition and respect for ICCAs. Increased visibility may also create or enhance opportunities for tourism, but the potential benefits of this must be weighed against the potential risks to the ICCA that could arise if tourism becomes excessive. Other benefits for communities could include the protection of some aspects of traditional knowledge that may otherwise be threatened, a sense of solidarity with other ICCA custodians, and other types of recognition. For example, one ICCA in Mexico experienced more exposure after registering and was awarded the Equator Prize one year later. In addition to benefiting communities, 
registering may have results that benefit the wider world. Providing data contributes to a growing body of knowledge that can help decision makers to form policies, including policies on conservation and other issues of relevance to ICCAs. Conservation practitioners, decision makers and others will have an increased awareness of the multiple values of ICCAs, including their contributions to conservation at the global scale. Engagement with global institutions like UNEP-WCMC and the ICCA Consortium helps to build an international network and community of ICCAs. This enables communities to learn from one another, promote common approaches and initiatives, and appreciate their collective value. The ICCA Consortium's website is given at the bottom of this slide for further information. Contributing to the documentation of ICCAs also has benefits for conservation at the global level. Firstly, the World Database on Protected Areas is used as the basis for the Protected Planet Report series. These reports assess how far the world has to go to meet international biodiversity targets, including Aichi Biodiversity Targets 11 and the Sustainable Development Goals. Providing data on ICCAs helps to clarify progress towards these international conservation targets and raises the profile of ICCAs in global conservation. Secondly, large-scale conservation challenges can be better addressed when we have complete data. It's easier to know how to address challenges if we already know what's being done on the ground. This is where reporting to the World Database on Protected Areas is particularly useful. Because the database is publicly available in the form of a global map, it enables many different users to understand which places are being conserved and by whom at the global level, and also to see where there are gaps. The following three maps are examples of countries where we have fairly complete data. These maps were created using the World Database on Protected Areas and are taken from a paper that is currently in preparation. The first example is Australia, where ICCAs make up nearly 12% of the total area covered by protected areas. This figure rises to nearly 40% if marine protected areas are not included. ICCAs are shown in purple on this map. The second example is Namibia. In this country, ICCAs make up over half of the total area of protected areas. As you can see from the map, it can also be concluded that they're contributing to the overall connectivity of the protected area network in the country. The final example is Brazil, where ICCAs make up over 40% of the total area covered by protected areas. These three examples are for countries where we have good data, but for the vast majority of countries we have very little data, and for some we have none at all. If all countries had data this complete, 
then the profile of ICCAs would be significantly raised among decision makers and the global community. This is one reason why it's so important to improve the quality of the data that we present to the world. In addition to the potential benefits we've discussed, there are a number of considerations that should be taken into account by communities while they are deciding whether to register. As with the potential benefits, some of these considerations are only relevant if the community chooses to make their information public. If a community chooses to provide a case study as part of their registration, then this will be visible online to anyone, along with the point location of the ICCA on a global map. If a community chooses to provide data to the World Database on Protected Areas, this will be visible to anyone through the Protected Planet website, including the location of the ICCA. This is not the case if the community places restrictions on their data, and this will be discussed in more depth later on in the webinar. These considerations may be particularly relevant to communities working with economically valuable resources, for example, species vulnerable to poaching or plants with high genetic value. Similarly, if the community itself is vulnerable, they may not wish to publish their location on the internet. It's also important to consider other stakeholders and whether registering the ICCA might spark a conflict of interest with these stakeholders. For example, neighboring communities, private sector organizations, governments, NGOs, or military organizations. Such conflicts of interest might include boundary disputes or conflicting claims over land or resources. Similarly, it is possible that existing conflicts within the community could be affected by the process of registering. The process of making collective decisions and an increase in appreciation of the multiple values of the ICCA could potentially exacerbate conflicts. If serious conflicts do arise during the registration process, then it is advisable for communities to work to strengthen their relationships before continuing with the registration process. It is also important to be aware that UNEP WCMC cannot assist communities in dealing with threats, either pre-existing or associated with the ICCA's registration. We are unable to assist with boundary disputes or unwanted attention from external groups. UNEP WCMC also cannot guarantee that governments will be supportive of the inclusion of ICCA data in national data sets. It is important that communities consider national and sub-national political contexts before deciding to register. The ICCA Consortium can help communities by providing advice if they have concerns about their particular national context. Of the considerations discussed, those that relate to the viewing or use of information by others can be limited by applying restrictions to the data. Whether or not to apply restrictions is the decision of the community providing information, and this will be discussed further later. Concerns or questions can be raised at any time by communities interested in registering and by those already registered by contacting us at the email address on the screen.
Communities also need to consider whether to provide information to the ICCA registry, the World Database on Protected Areas, or both. The specific benefits experienced may vary depending on whether an ICCA is listed in one of the databases or the other. For example, benefits relating to measuring the contribution of ICCAs to global conservation relate mainly to the World Database on Protected Areas. Benefits relating to storing of detailed knowledge apply only to the ICCA registry. But it is important to remember that a community can choose to have its ICCA included in both databases. One caveat is that ICCAs that do not meet the IUCN definition of a protected area can only be listed in the ICCA registry and not in the World Database on Protected Areas. In summary, the key differences between the two databases are the governance type that is focused on, the scale at which the databases function, the level of detail of the information, the number of sites currently in the databases, and the information that's provided on the websites. The key links or features in common are the data standards and review processes, Data from non-government sources provided to either database must go through the same review and quality checking processes. The databases also have the same basic structure, but the ICCA registry has additional information fields. And ICCAs can be included in both. This section will discuss what happens to the information provided by communities. The ICCA registry and World Database on Protected Areas can both be used to look at global trends in protected areas and ICCAs. Last year, for example, a paper used the ICCA registry to look at the objectives of communities managing ICCAs and its summarized results can be seen in the top right of the screen. Many scientists and researchers use the World Database on Protected Areas to look at how well protected certain ecosystems or species are. Their results can then be used by decision makers to plan how to better conserve biodiversity and fill gaps in the protected area system. It is important that these studies are able to fully take into account the contributions of ICCAs. Businesses also use the World Database on Protected Areas for high level planning of operations. Extractive industry companies in particular use the World Database on Protected Areas to avoid planning their operations inside protected areas. With more complete data, these industries are better able to avoid damaging biodiversity and communities. The World Database on Protected Areas is also used for indicators that measure progress towards global conservation targets, including the Aichi targets and the Sustainable Development Goals. The graph on the left is from the Protected Planet Report 2016 and shows the growth in the area covered by protected areas over time. It is likely that these figures would be much higher if more ICCAs were included in the WDPA. The Global Biodiversity Outlook, published by the Convention on Biological Diversity Secretariat, also uses the World Database on Protected Areas to measure progress towards different protected area targets. This part of the webinar 
we'll look at case studies from communities who have already registered. In particular, examining the benefits they've experienced and their motivations for registering. With the exception of the video that I will show you, these examples are all taken from a paper published in 2016 by Colleen Corrigan and others. The first example is a video we've received from a community member in the Philippines discussing his community's motivations for registering. With thanks to CASAPI and the Philippines ICCA Consortium for providing this video. I hope that you will find this video useful when discussing the benefits of participating with your broader networks. The second example is a Mexican ICCA registered in 2009. The custodians of this ICCA felt that their registration resulted in increased recognition, contributing to their being awarded the Equator Prize. They also feel they benefited from enhanced ecotourism and that they benefited from the opportunity to share their experience and to support other communities. A third example is an ICCA in Gambia, registered in 2012. This ICCA was already recognized in the protected area network at the national level. However, the community felt that the documentation of their ICCA at the global level would provide a complementary layer of recognition and offer benefits of learning from a wider community. Two further examples are from the Philippines, both registered in 2012. In one case, the custodian communities were prioritized for livelihood support as a result of being included in the ICCA registry. In the second example, once the ICCA had been registered, 
small-scale mining managers voluntarily moved their operations further from the boundaries of the ICCA. Lastly, two ICCAs in China registered in 2014. In one case, communities were motivated to register by the potential for increased ecotourism. In the second case, the three communities involved in the ICCA felt that their relationship and collaboration was enhanced by the process of collectively registering. This section is on safeguards and restrictions. It will discuss options for restricting sensitive data and safeguards that are in place, including the peer review process and takedown policy. If any of the considerations discussed earlier are of particular concern, or if communities consider their data sensitive for other reasons, then restricting access and use of data is an option. Data can be restricted in one of two ways. Option one is where data are available to all users and for all uses, except for use by or on behalf of a commercial entity. Option two is where the data are not shared at all beyond the managers of the World Database on Protected Areas and ICCA Registry. Before applying restrictions to their data, it is important that communities weigh the need for their data to be restricted against the potential benefits of their data being publicly available. Benefits associated with increased visibility and recognition of the ICCA may not be realized if the data are restricted. As well as restrictions, there are other safeguards in place. All information remains the property of the data provider and they can request that it be removed from the databases and online platforms at any time. Restrictions can also be added or removed at any time. Restricted information in the World Database on Protected Areas is stored separately from non-restricted information and source information is maintained so that queries can be raised in the future, including on any concerns that may emerge. One significant safeguard is the peer review process. All data from non-government data providers must go through this process and data can't be included in the World Database on Protected Areas before this process has occurred. In addition to confirming that the data are valid, the peer review process exists so that concerns can be raised about how information has been gathered, including whether a free prior and informed consent process has been carried out. The peer review process is an element of the ICCA Global Support Initiative and is being developed at the national level in several countries. The ICCA Consortium can help to support the development of nationally appropriate processes. There is also an option of review by the national government. This option is for the World Database on Protected Areas only. The decision of whether to undergo peer review or government review is up to the data provider. UNEP-WCMC operates a takedown policy for the data it manages in its databases. This means that if there are issues around copyright or a breach of law, then the data in question will be removed pending further investigation. 
This policy also applies in cases of ICCAs where concerns are raised about free, prior and informed consent or other issues. This webinar has provided some background on the purpose and function of the registry and World Database on Protected Areas and looked at some of the reasons why communities might wish to participate. The second webinar in this series will focus on how to participate. It will discuss in detail ways to participate, the specific information required, the peer review process, and what to expect after providing data. I hope that many of you will be able to attend the second webinar, which will be held tomorrow at the same time. Thank you all for attending. On your screen, there are three links to the ICCA data manual, which contains much of the information you've just heard. There's an English version, a French version, and a Spanish version. There are also contact details on the screen in case you have further questions after the webinar ends. The history of the ICCA registry link will take you to a recent paper that provides additional background on the registry and information on its current status. I'll now answer questions that have been sent in during the webinar. If you have any further questions, please type them into the questions box now.